In this BGenius demonstration, we are going to import an existing Data Vault project and extend it inside a feature branch. We are going to create a new source system from which additional sales transaction information should be loaded. The source system will be integrated with new Data Vault objects and connected by extending an existing link. Finally, we are going to integrate this new model structure into an existing sales smart via an additional data flow. After logging into BGenius X, you will see the solution overview page. All existing solutions and projects can be accessed from here. Projects are grouped inside of solutions, which acts as a container for them. User access can be controlled for each solution by pressing the users tag. This allows you to add and remove existing users to and from the solution. The solution menu gives you access to additional functionality, like editing or deleting a solution. In order to add a new solution, press the Add Solution button and provide a unique name and description. Press the Add Project button to add a new project to the solution. There you need to provide a unique project name, a description, the URL of your Git repository, the implementation package you want to use, and its version. Finally, you need to select how you want to connect to your Git repository. If you are using a GitHub repository, select GitHub from the drop-down menu. Afterwards, click the Sign into GitHub button. You will be redirected to the authentication screen of GitHub itself, where you need to authorize BGenius to access your repository. After connecting to your GitHub repository, press the Save button to finish creating your project. Click the newly created project to access its content. If you already have an existing project in one of your Git repositories, it is also possible to import it into your solution. In order to do so, Press the Import Project button from the Solution menu. Provide a unique project name, a description, and the URL to the existing repository. If your repository lives on GitHub, select the GitHub option from the Authentication dropdown. Afterwards, press the button that says Sign in with GitHub. Since we are already authorized with the GitHub account, we are immediately signed in again. Press Save to import the project. Click the imported project to access its content. Like with new projects, you can see the main branch of the imported repository. We also already have a remote feature branch that was created at some time in the past. You could continue working on this feature branch by pressing the checkout button. But for this demonstration, we are going to create a new feature branch. Press the Add Feature button, provide a unique name for the branch, and finally press the Save button to create the new feature branch. Hovering over the feature branch will display the Start Modeling button. In addition, you can access the Feature Branch menu, which will give you access to several Git features that you can perform on this branch. To access the branch, press the Start Modeling button. You are now redirected to the first modeling area, which is the Discovery Management section of a project. On the Discovery page, you can manage your existing source systems. A source system can hold multiple discoveries of itself. A discovery is a snapshot of a specific physical source system, like a relational database, at a specific point in time. 
It is used to import metadata from sources into BGenius. Each source system can have exactly one active discovery. Through the Discovery menu, you can view the raw content of a discovery file. In order to use the metadata from a discovery in the modeling section of BGenius, you can create source model objects through the Discovery menu. To add a new discovery, press the Add Discovery button. Now you can add the discovery to an existing source system or create a new one. In this demonstration, we create a new source system. Provide a name for the source system and a description. Depending on the type of your discovery file, choose the appropriate file type. Choose DataHub if your discovery file was created via the Azure DataHub service. Choose BGenius Discovery if your discovery file was created by using the BGenius Discovery app. Choose BGenius file format if the discovery file was created manually or by any other means that comply with the file format requirements. In our case, we are going to use a file that was created based on our BGenius file format specifications. After uploading the file, press the Save button. This will trigger a dialog where you can choose which source model objects should be used in your project. Since we are going to extend our existing model with sales transaction information, we only select the sales transaction object. Pressing the Add button will make this discovery available under the newly created source system. At any time, we can select additional objects from this source system besides our already selected sales transaction object. Simply open the Discovery menu and click the Create Source option to select additional objects. After managing our discovery, we can switch into the Dataflow modeling area of BGenius. We have already prepared a demo project that we want to extend. The project consists of four layers. Each column represents a modeling layer. The first column displays source model objects, the second column stage objects, the third consists of different data vault modeling objects, and the last column shows data mart objects. To get a better overview about our model data, we can have multiple different views on it. Open the view menu to create a new view. Provide a view name, a description, and press the save button. Your view will be empty by default. You can now add any existing model objects to the view through the column menus. You can also create new objects that will be added to the current view and available to add in all other existing views. For our task, we will add the Fact Sales Data Mart object to our current view since we want to extend it. Adding a model object does not create a new one, it only exists once but can be added to multiple views. Changes made in one view will be reflected in all other views as well. To find all other model objects which are involved in the full data flow, you can utilize the data lineage view. The data lineage will show objects from every layer which are part of the full data flow. The data lineage is a great tool to navigate through your models. You can also access all modeling options on each object, like you can in the modeling view itself. By pressing the Add to Current View button, you can bring all objects from the Data Lineage view into the modeling area. Like with the Mart object, these modeling objects are not created as a new instance. They are only added to this specific view. Now we can add our previously created Sales Transaction object to the view as well. Based on this object, we are going to create derived model objects and connect everything together. Based on the added source model object from before, we now want to create a stage object. The stage object should be based on the sales transaction source object. 
on the source model object, we are offered an option to create a stage object automatically. After selecting the option, a new stage model object is created. Clicking the object will navigate you to the details page of the data flow. On the right side, you can see the terms of the newly created stage object, and on the left side, the connected source model object. You can also see how the terms are connected to each other by hovering over their link symbols. Based on the selected project configuration, you will also see additional default terms, which are created automatically for each model object type. The model object menu will give us access to modeling automation features. To avoid having to create standard model objects manually, we offer a range of automation wizards, which greatly improve the modeling process. For our purposes, we need to create a link satellite from the stage object. This will trigger a series of dialogues. In the first dialogue, we can select an object to which we want to create a relationship. We select the sales data link and press the Create Relationship button. On the second dialog, we can choose which terms from the stage object should be automatically mapped. Since we are inside of the link satellite automation wizard, BGenius knows not to show any business key terms, therefore we simply select all available terms. We can also do this manually. Let's create another link satellite through the wizard. This time, we are not selecting a relationship target on the first page of the wizard. This will allow us to manually create one afterwards. The newly created object has the same name as before, but is postfixed with a running number. When we switch to the relationship modeling view, we can create new and manage existing relationships in a visual modeling mode. Let's add the previously created link satellite and the link which is the target of our relationship to the relationship modeling view. Our goal is to establish a relationship from the link satellite to the link model object. Press the plus button on the from part of the relationship. The plus button from possible relationship targets will be highlighted. Let's compare the manual and automatically created relationships. They are exactly the same. Since one of the satellites was just for show and tell, we will delete the second one. Like in the data flow modeling view, you have access to all modeling features also from the relationship modeling view. After creating the object, we can check the content of the data flow. We can see that no business key terms were created. We can also see that all selected terms from the wizard dialog were created as expected. In addition, foreign key terms were created. These are an effect of creating the relationship in the first wizard dialog from before. For each business key in the relationship target, a foreign key term in our link satellite object was created automatically. Now we need to map the automatically created foreign key terms from before. To make this task easier, we will filter the right hand terms list to only show foreign key terms. BGenius offers two modes to map terms. The auto mode will map terms with the same name, and the target mode will let you choose the source and target yourself. Let's find the customer ID and map it to the sell to customer number and bill to customer number foreign key terms. Next, we map the item ID to the item's number and the branch ID to the location code foreign key terms. For the sales invoice number foreign key term, we need to combine two source terms, namely transaction ID and transaction line number. First map the transaction ID like we did before. 
When trying to map the transaction line number as well, you are greeted with a dialog. Press the Edit Expression button to create your own custom expression. The expression editor lets you write your own expressions. You have access to all source objects via the data flow set alias. In our case, this would be S1. The editor has built in IntelliSense that lets you find source terms quickly. After pressing the Save button, the expression is inserted into the expression field of the term Mapping. Hovering over the link symbol will highlight all reference source terms in the expression. Our last modeling task is to connect our Sales Transaction Link satellite to the Fact Sales Data Mart object. Inside the Mart object, we already have an existing data flow set. To connect a new data flow source, we need to create a new data flow set. Provide a name for the new data flow set and select Union as the set operator. Press the Save button afterwards. This will create an empty data flow set. Therefore, we need to add a model object to this set. Press the Add Model Object button. Select the Sales Transaction Link satellite and add it to the new set. Now we need to map our target terms to some of the available source terms. In target mode, we map quantity to quantity and sales amount to amount. Like before, we filter for foreign key terms to make it easier for us to find the right ones. Finally, in target mode, we map the appropriate foreign key terms to the remaining unmapped target terms. Let's check the fact sales data lineage again. Compared to the data lineage before, we can now see a whole new data flow leading into our fact sales data modeling object. All three new modeling objects from source to Mart are now integrated into the full data flow. We can also take a deeper look into the model by checking the term based data lineage. This view is accessible through the term mapping view of a model object. The context menu for term mappings will provide the option to open the term-based data lineage for the selected term. Not only will you see each single term mapping through all layers, but this view will also visualize term mappings that use multiple source terms inside an expression. Let's switch to the Generate page. Since we have already generated this project before, you can see an earlier generation being available in the view, which we could download or push to our Git repository. Since we made changes to our model, we want to generate new artifacts. It is as easy as just pressing the Generate button. Instead of the download button, you will now see the status of the generation process. Finally, you are presented with the download button again. You can either download the generated artifacts as a zip archive, or you can push it to the configured Git repository, which we will do. After pushing, we can check the content of the Git repository. A new directory, Artifacts, has been created in the Feature branch. This directory contains all the generated artifacts that you need to deploy and run your data platform solution.